Ghana has had a long tradition and culture of fishing, owing to its rich endowment of significant and valuable fisheries and aquaculture resources. Together with aquaculture, the fisheries resources of Ghana has long been a pillar of the national economy, contributing significantly to her socio-economic development. The fish industry had been and continues to be uh, a significant contributor to the industry. As we speak now, it employs about 2.5 million people, those who are actively involved and people along the chain. In terms of revenue, fisheries uh, contributes about 1 billion uh, US dollars, about 1.4 to the national uh, GDP. Fish, as are now, contributes about 60% of the nutritional requirement for this country. And that's quite significant. Yeah. Due to the seemingly free access and weak control with regard to the resource exploitation, many took advantage to build more vessels. This led to too many vessels chasing the available fish. Fishing capacity and effort was extremely higher and did not match up with the available fish stock. Ghana's fish resources were heavily exploited. We, we have had challenges with overcapacity. Uh, what I mean by overcapacity is we have a lot more fishing efforts for that matter, many more vessels fishing, putting too much pressure on the little resources that we have. That was one of the challenges, in fact a significant challenge as such. And because of that, producers or practitioners were not harvesting enough. As a result of that, Producers resorted to a lot of illegal methods in trying to harvest. Uh, it included uh, use of light, it included use of dynamite and other unorthodox methods. And so these were some of the challenges that we had before the advent of the Madagen plan. We came to a point where our fish uh, exposed to the EU were rejected because a lot of illegal fishing was being done, you know. Vessels go to sea and they stray into other waters and go and fish. You have vessels that go to sea and they transfer the fish from one vessel to another, which our law doesn't accept. So the EU had to place a ban on our fishery. So how did the yellow card affect industry? The effect of that was if it was supposed to cut down on our exports to the European Union. So if we had gotten a red card, that would have been, or oh, there would not be any fishery, any fishing activities or any fish exports being sent to the European Union. So it, it prompted Ghana or the fisheries of uh, the fisheries and aquaculture development ministry to come up with a, a, a management plan, a fisheries management plan to help track and put all the regulators, uh, sorry, put all the operators on, on check. You have the fish, but of course, some number of canoes should go after the fish. So if you have more canoes, you know, than there exists the fish, it means that you always be taking the fish at a rate that they cannot replenish themselves. And so you have problems with overfishing and then, or sometimes you have an overfished uh, resource. Why were all these happening? Now, all these things were happening because we didn't have uh, a system of managing our fishery uh, that actually speaks to the modern management you know, systems. For example, uh, modern management entails that you have to get an electronic monitoring system that can be able to you know, know what is happening at the sea when people are on land. So this monitoring system helps us to know whether the fish, uh, fishing is being done in uh, acceptable waters. You know, trawlers are not supposed to, for example, come below the 30 meter depth contour. So you have to have a system that will be monitoring you know, the vessel to make sure that it is in the correct waters. Seeking to rebuild fish stocks to enhance the socio-economic conditions of fishing communities create employment within national and international frameworks and standards and improve food security as well as contribute to GDP and foreign exchange earnings, 
the government of Ghana set off to reform the country's fisheries and aquaculture sector. With the support of the West Africa Regional Fisheries Project, a robust fisheries management plan was developed. What does this FMP seek to achieve? First, it's an attempt by the FC and the ministry to reduce the effort. And what we've done, especially the trolleys, for instance, is the introduction of closed season. Closed season means that the season is closed. It means that you pack your vessel. So these vessels are packed. So if they are not going to sea, it means that uh, they are not uh, fishing. In that case, the fish is allowed or is given a free space to breed. You see, so and the breeding grounds are not disturbed. You see, so the fish are given a breeding uh, space to breed. Uh, so it means that uh, after the close season, the fishes that have bred will be able to grow and then we have more fish. So that is the principle behind the close season. So, how is the close season impacting on industry? Uh, it started in 2016, where in November we closed this in, and for all that period, the trawlers didn't go to sea. In 2017, February and March, for two months, the vessels didn't go to sea. And for 2018, January, February, we've not gone to sea. Effectively, you are saying that within a year, you are only going to fish for about 10 months. And, and that's a significant reduction in, in, in fishing efforts. We just had a close season, and we started going to sea. Um, the impact is great that we are getting more fish, and we are getting bigger fish. A bit of increase in harvest, especially for the demersals, has been something that has been observed by most of the, the trolleys. Uh, because now you are limited to what you have to do. We don't go harvesting a lot of pelagics or the small pelagics. So, uh, yes, a bit of increased efforts in the demersals. That's number one. Uh, and then a cut down in the efforts in the harvesting of demersals. The These are some of the issues. But of also very important to uh, what the, the, the introduction of the management plan has done is is the involvement of industry in fashion out programs and policies. If you look at the current arrangement, before closed seasons are observed, it takes industry and the FC to decide and agree on the period. And so industry or the regulator doesn't impose anything on, 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 on industry and say, closes in around this point. And, and for me, that is one important observation that I can make. What other measures are in place to reduce excessive pressure on the sea? Uh, previously, we were having very large, you know, uh, vessels. We have been able to now uh, reduce the sizes of the, the vessels. Now, when we are bringing in a new vessel, uh, the size of the vessel that you are supposed to bring uh, is has been reduced, you know, from 400,000 uh, tons to, you know, uh, you know, 400, uh, uh, you know, uh, gross registered uh, tonnage to uh, 300, 200. So that one, uh, you know, reduces the size of the vessel. So obviously, when the size of your vessel is reduced, it means that. The amount of fish you can also catch for a, you know, a trip will also reduce naturally. Another significant thing is, is the attempt to align fishing efforts to the resources availability. Licenses are not issued indiscriminately. Uh, issuers, or for that matter, the commission is guided by some measure of relying on science and for that matter the availability of resources before lines is an issue so you look at the current arrangement where for almost a year no new lines have been issued it goes a long way to reducing the fishing efforts so certain areas will be classified as protected areas and uh, you can uh, you know those areas will not be uh, you know opened to any entrance you know there will be uh, opened under strict management, you know, uh, regimes. 
Now, all these things we are doing it to, as we say, to align the, the capacity and the capability or the effort or the framework, the resources that we have. As part of the implementation of the FMP, the West African Regional Fisheries Project has supported the development of reliable database for the industrial, semi-industrial, and artisanal sectors. We actually developed this uh, vessel, uh, you know, web-based uh, vessel uh, uh, register, uh, so that you can just by the button, you just press the button, and then you can know that oh, this vessel is called maybe Sea God. It is, uh, you know, registered uh, number six and so. We have managed to get a registration uh, scheme. We have done registration and licensing for the inshore fleet and also the tuna and industrial fleets have all been, all been registered and licensed. So at least on that score, we can say that at least we know the numbers that are exploiting the fish. Another important area that the project has focused on is scientific marine research. Since 2000, we haven't had any uh, government research vessel. Therefore, we rely on the goodwill of international vessels passing through our waters, like RV Fish of Nancy from Norway, which comes once in a while to help us um, undertake our stock levels to know exactly what sort of fish are where and in what quantities and what we can harvest on a yearly basis such that we will not destroy the stores. So one of the areas is that we have managed to get Fridge of Nansing to come in the year 2006 and also has come in 2016 and 2017. There was a big gap from 2006 to 2016. But then from 2016, they did an uh, ecosystem survey on our Demesa bottom dwelling fish and our pelagic resources, surface dwelling fish, uh, species, which we found out that a um, majority of the Demesa species are rather stable, low in biomass, but stable. So we see an increase, slight increase, right in our Demesa stocks. We also see some improvement in our pelagic stores and we need to sustain this effort by acquiring our own small research vessel and I'm happy that the president uh, last year in November when Peter Lansing came around you know what is, he promised that he will do his very best to get us a small research vessel and I'm confident of what the president has said. The exploitation and pressure on Ghana's fish resources has reduced significantly. With these measures, will there be any situation where too many vessels were chasing the available fish stock again? Our fisheries management plan is seeking to cut down more vessels. So virtually to solve that problem for us, we'll be having lesser vessels chasing more fish. The WAF project should continue to help us, but I will say that uh, a big thank you to them. And I hope that you increase their activities to help uh, even the inland uh, projects that we have. You know, we have the, the, we had the Galamsey affecting our inland waters and everything um, moving from the inland ends up in the sea. So if we don't tackle both the inland and then the on sea, we haven't done anything. So I will urge them to also do more for the inland activities so at least we can have a sustainable sea, a sustainable fisheries uh, uh, stock. Oh, 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 oh,